This video is sponsored by Dungeons of Drakenheim, a new 5th edition adventure designed by the Dungeon Dudes and forged in ghost fire, so you know it's gonna be one spicy meatball. This big beastie boy takes you from level 1 up to level 13 with 20 locations, 5 awesome factions, and really unhandsome monsters. I'm sorry my sweet tentacle boys, but magic meteors doesn't make for a catwalk glow up. They do make for fantastic magical material though, just don't stab yourself uh, Okay, just do whatever you want, you know, it's your adventure. It also has a really awesome list of physical products, and I think all of them are available as add-ons after the Kickstarter. So go check it out on Kickstarter using the link below. You gotta use that link so they know who's really making them all that gabagool. Enjoy the video. Welcome to Basically Halflings, the non-Hobbit species of people that have no affiliation with the Tolkien Foundation whatsoever. Same goes for ent- Treants. Yeah, tree people. You gotta avoid their legal team sending the Nazgul to your front door, cause both of them are an equally scary bunch. Anyways, hobbits are the most relaxed group of humanoids in the world, and they're all retired from birth. Where in a human story, they head out to face the world with a sword in one hand and determination in the other. They fight, lose some, win some, suffer a lot, and ultimately learn that life is all about the simple things and sharing them with the people around you. And the whole time that stupid white knight guy is living his 40 year long life, attaining wisdom for a peaceful 5 year retirement, a halfling was sitting on the sidelines drinking lemonade and thinking, yeah man, took you long enough to figure it out, do you uh, you want some pie? I think that 9 out of every 10 halflings are zen masters, and if you're role playing a halfling who likes starting fights, you're playing the 1% of them that went crazy. Living communal and tactful lives, halflings know how to talk down just about any situation and avoid a potential fight. But when a fight does start, in perfect Frodo fashion, they hit the deck and scurry away from the scene like rats. Slippery little half pints, but it's probably why they live a few dozen years longer than your average angry sack of monkey that is mankind. I'm gonna break the format here a bit and look at the halfling traits because they're all really funny to me. First is their dexterity bonus. This trait doesn't necessarily make them more acrobatic, and the only reason that they have it is literally just because they're short. For example, if you were to swing a mace at an angry hawk, chances are that you would probably hit it. If you were swinging a mace at a fly, I'd call you an idiot and laugh at your expense. Same goes for hill giants and halflings. I think they benefit from wind currents. Like if you were to kick at a halfling, the wind picking up around your leg would hit them first, and they'd just go flying like Team Rocket. But in the same way as a fly, they also get halfling nimbleness. They can walk between your legs, climb over you, duck around your arm, or vanish into your pant leg and then pop out your sleeve to get past you. Again, because they're baby-sized people. Age, um, they live a little longer. This isn't because they're magical at all, it's just because their lifestyle and outlook makes them immune to things like hypertension and other stress-induced body melting that we do nowadays. They're only lawful good because they like what they do, so they keep doing it. Laws are meant to just be repeating what works with the knowledge of what could go wrong otherwise. And surprisingly, they can become cute little zealots in the face of oppression. There's no reason for that, and it certainly isn't a nod to any existing media about short hairy hippies who wear rings. You know, Sonic the Hedgehog. Also, yeah, they're three feet tall, so halfling villages feel like visiting a very well-educated second grade class. And the most important detail to me is their lucky feet, which is oddly one of the best yet most forgettable abilities in the game. They are immune to critical failure. Nothing that happens to a halfling can, in any way, be an absolute catastrophe. Nobody knows how to roleplay this properly, because luck is an abstract and almost impossible thing to present in clever storytelling. But I think this is actually just because halflings always look on the bright side. Like if a human misses an attack and breaks their sword, they cry like babies and complain. But when a halfling breaks their sword, they stab you with the hilt and then smile thinking about the fact that they get to look for a new sword soon. Then their last ability, Brave. Halflings don't shit their pants in the presence of a dragon because, as a bunch of Zen masters, they think, oh, I'm probably gonna die here. At least I had a really good breakfast. And if I somehow survive, I'll make an extra special breakfast tomorrow. It's not bravery the way that you think it is, it's just breakfast. Oh yeah, and then their sub-races are either rambling tourists or raging alcoholics. They are not called stout because of their stature. They're called that because 40% of their blood content is made up of actual stouts and the rest is wine. 
I remember back in my gnome video how I said I wanted to be a gnome. Well, I, I feel conflicted now because I also want the halfling life. Like I want to roll up the contents of a green tea bag and chain smoke it, then wash it down by sculling a monster energy drink poured down my throat using the momentum of a roller coaster, and then go have a picnic with my grandma and do some wine tasting with my cousin. Different strokes, like I said before, you should watch that video. The average halfling really likes its small town home, when they get to know everybody around them and they tend to their gardens because of how rewarding the taste of a homegrown tomato is. But there are adventurers among them. Now what I'm gleaning from halflings here is that none of them are out for themselves, and none of them are selfish in a greedy sense. So the adventurers aren't seeking anything in a sense, they are just seeking adventure and friendship, the sightseeing and knowledge not to use it, but to appreciate it. If you haven't figured it out, there's a pretty big reason why the halfling in the picture is playing an instrument, and also has the face of a bartender or like a diner mom, but that might, that's probably just me. I do like that their traditions endure dozens of generations, outlasting human empires, just because halflings know what's up and humans are too angry and horny to stop and just breathe. Halflings also don't have any government and none of them ever work, which is to say that they don't feel the fear of survival pushing them into the obligation of work. They'll tend to gardens, bake pies, deliver mail, go on grand quests, kill dragons, become demigods, learn ninth level spells, and alter reality, not because they have to, but because it was just what they were doing. And that's basically halflings. Here's a quick quote from a Zen master. Let's see if it lines up with halflings. Having no destination, I am never lost. By this guy. Interesting. Alright, get lost.